Hey, GED student Shana had a question about some probability problems that she was working on in her curriculum. So just to let uh, everybody know here, this is a little more complex than what comes up on the GED, the depth of her question. I'm going to answer the question thoroughly, but I'll let you know which parts really apply to the GED and which don't. Okay, so definitely the first concept, probability. Um, comes up on the GED, it comes up on the science, social studies, and math tests, um, or could come up on any of those three tests because it falls into uh, that um, area of math known as data analysis. Um, so probability is just how likely something is to happen. It's the ratio. Notice I use the word ratio, and remember that a ratio is like a fraction. Um, but ratios... Of, well, let's just start with that, and then I'll explain more what I mean. It's the ratio of, I call it wins out of total. Now, you're thinking, what the heck is a win? Well, if we're looking at probability, we're looking at the chances that something happens. So a win is that thing happening. Now, looks like uh, your uh, program, Shana, calls it the number of favorable outcomes. Okay, it's favorable when we win, okay? <laughs> so that's what I mean, the ratio of wins out of total. So listen to my language. I'm saying ratio, so we can make a fraction of wins out of total. So um, for example, um, uh, let's look at the classic spinner problem. I want you to imagine that I have a spinner that has a red, yellow, red, and blue section. They're all the same size, and I'm spinning my little spinner here. So what's the probability that I land on yellow? Well, if I win when I land on yellow, you know, I'm looking for the probability that I land on yellow, then one of those slots is yellow out of how many equal pieces out of four equal pieces. So probability that I land on yellow is one out of four. But I hope you guys know that fractions can be written uh, two other ways. There's two other ways to talk about pieces or parts of numbers besides just a fraction. So you could also see this come up in decimal form, and you might be saying, I don't know how to convert a fraction to a decimal. Uh, no, your calculator does, though. There's a convert to decimal um, button on your calculator, okay? Or you could just know that by definition, a fraction bar means the same as divide, and 1 divided by 4 is uh, 0.25. Of course it is. Of course, one quarter is like 25 cents, guys. Okay, now uh, one more though. That's not the only way we could express this. We could also express it as a percent. So if you have that decimal in your calculator right now, like I do, to turn it into a percent for the GED, even if you don't know how to do it, there is this convert to percent button. Convert to percent. It's in green. You're going to notice that it's in green above the closed parentheses. So anytime you want something in green, you have to press second. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to press second, then the closed parentheses, and enter, and you'll see that 0.25 is the same as 25%. Now, if you know how to do these conversions by hand, all the more power to you. You, um, So do I. Uh, but even if you don't, in a pinch, your calculator could do it. So we can see here the probability that I spin yellow uh, could be expressed three different ways. It's a 1 in 4 a chance. Uh, I have a 0.25 chance or I have a 25% chance. Okay, So that's the basics. That's what you have to know for the GED. Now that being said, um, Shana stumbled across a couple of vocab words that I don't expect on the GED, but let me go ahead and define them. Theoretical probability versus experimental probability. So it turns out you could have two kinds of probability, theoretical. Well, what does theoretical mean? That means in theory. So in theory, my little spinner that you saw, that was the probability we just did if it was really red, yellow, blue, red, or whatever the heck I said. The theoretical probability that I land on yellow is, of course, 1 in 4. Okay, In theory, if the four pieces are the same, then one out of every four spins, I should land on yellow. But some of you, if you're like me, and I'm a game player who's not very lucky, and I'm always computing probability, and yet the probability never seems to work out for me. Like I'm like, I'll go uh, and I'll tell my um, family, I'm like, I've got a one in three shot of making points on this particular dice roll. And my family always laughs at me because one in three shot or not, I just never seem to make any points. So that's 
that's the difference between theoretical and experimental. Experimental is what happens when you actually did it. So I want you to imagine that I took this spinner and instead of just saying in theory out of one, one out of four rolls, I should get, I'm sorry, in theory out of, man, English is hard. Let me try it one more time. Instead of saying, in theory, one out of every four of my spins should be yellow, you do an experiment and you really see you do a trial. Okay, so that's the difference. You actually tried it. So in an experimental role, well, maybe you spin here. I don't know. I could spin uh, 25 times. And of the 25 times that I spin, I actually only land on yellow five times. Okay, so what was my experimental probability? Well, I do it the same way. I take my winning probability here and I do it over or out of the total spins that I had. I Five times out of 25. Now, of course, you know, hopefully you guys know that all final fraction answers should be reduced. So I'm going to reduce this sucker in my TI. If you reduce it by hand, good for you. Actually, I think I'll do it both ways. So if I were reducing it by hand, I could divide out the common factor of 5 from both of them, and I would see that's a 1 in 5 chance. But what if you forget how to reduce fractions? You can do it on your TI as well. You use the N over D button for a fraction. You type a 5 in the top, a 25 in the bottom, arrow around to navigate. If you're having trouble typing in fractions, it might be because you're in the wrong mode for it. Uh, be in uh, math print mode for your fractions to work well and then press enter and it will the ti will reduce it for you and tell you that is indeed one fifth so in this case even though i had a theoretical shot one in four of getting yellow uh, my experiment my experimental probability was only one in five okay now that we've defined our two terms let's go look at the two problems you were struggling with miss sheena Okay. It says a coin is flipped 20 times. The results are 12 heads and 8 tails. The theoretical probability of getting heads is 60%. Is that true or false? So it's not that one of these things wasn't 60%. That's true. It's just it's not the thing they were asking about. What snots? Look what they said. The theoretical probability of getting heads is 60%. Yeah. Okay, guys. Theoretical probability is in theory. In theory, coins are fair. Okay, I know that there's weighted coins out there in the world. I know that my luck isn't as good as my 13-year-old daughter's luck who always beats me, whether we're flipping coins or rolling dice. I understand that when we do an experiment, it doesn't always match. But in theory, my coin is a fair coin. In theory, one of the sides is a head out of two total sides. So in theory, my experimental probability, or I'm sorry, my theoretical probability should be one out of two. If I were to put that into percentage form, I hope you know that's 50%. But even if you didn't, you could figure that out in your TI. Here's how I'd type it into my TI. I'd put in the fraction one half by using the N over D button again. Type in the one, type in the two. Now I'd make sure that I arrow out of my fraction so I'm not blinking inside my fraction, so I just press that right arrow. Okay, and now I want the convert to percent button. So even if you didn't know that a half was the same as 50%, you could use your TI to convert into a percent. So remember we do that by hitting second. Um, and then right above the close parentheses button is the convert to percent. So second, convert to percent, and you would see indeed that is 50%. My TI verifies it. So the theoretical probability of getting heads is actually 50%, not 60%. This was a false statement. Now what were they doing? They were doing the experimental probability. What really happened in the experiment? Well, in the experiment, they got 12 heads, out of 20 total rolls, I agree. And where did I get that? If you're not sure where my 20 came from, 12 heads, eight tails is 20 total, uh, not rolls, but uh, flips of a coin. So 12 out of 20 rolls, I do agree with you, would be 60%. Um, and I could verify that in my TI again. 
by pressing the N over D button. So let me write it over here. Putting in 12 on the top, 60 on the bottom, 60, 20, follow along Kate, 12 on the top, uh, 20 on the bottom, and then arrowing out of the fraction, I'm talking about it and doing it at the same time, and uh, then the convert to percent button, and I would get 60%. So yes, those are 60% odds is the experimental probability. But yeah, they were trying to screw with your head. The theoretical probability wouldn't change just because the experiment showed different results. Okay, great, last question you had. Uh, you said a coin is flipped 25 times and lands on head 16 times. Based on the experimental probability, how many heads would you predict for 200 flips of the coin? So it says based on the experimental probability here, so I will find the probability that's actually based on my experiment. I won't use the one half probability, the theoretical probability that I have a fair coin. I'll use my experimental probability, so that's 16 out of 25. 16 total heads, or 16 heads out of 25 total flips, okay? Remember, it's wins over total. Okay, so this is the ratio that I'm going with as my experimental probability. But if this continues to be true, that's what they're saying when they say based on the experimental probability. They're saying if this ratio continues to be true, how many heads would you predict for 200 flips of the coin? Really easy way to solve this is with a proportion problem. Anytime you have two equal relationships in a problem, the same relationship showing up, twice, in this case, wins to total, uh, you can you set up a proportion problem, fraction equal to fraction. So on that side, I had the wins on the top and the total on the bottom. So I wanna make sure I have the same on the right-hand side. It says, how many heads? Well, heads are my winning coin, how many heads? So I'm gonna make sure that my how many is on the top. You say, well, how do I write how many in math? Um, you use a letter. Whenever we don't know a number, we use a letter to stand in for it. I'll use X. I don't care. Go ahead, use S for Shana. Whatever. Okay, I'm going to use an X. And then out of total. Well, we know how many total flips we're going to do. We're going to do 200 flips. So I'll put 200 down here. And now this is a proportion problem, not really a probability problem anymore. I've dealt with the probability side of it. I'm going to solve it like a proportion problem. Again, if you have never done this before, I do have a virtual class video on solving uh, proportions algebraically. That's what I'm about to do. So first step, cross multiply. 25 times x is 25x. And we learned in that video that I was referring to that cross products are equivalent, equal. So I put an equal sign and I find this cross product. I cross multiply here. Again, I'll do it in my calculator. 16 times 200, ooh, I could have done that without a calculator, is 3200. This is almost solved, but the letter's not alone. I got to get rid of this 25. It's currently multiplying. I will do the opposite of multiplying. Opposite of multiplying is dividing. Rule of solving is I can do whatever I want as long as I do it to both sides. And so I balance my change over there by dividing by the exact same number. Let's see what our new equation is now. Multiplying and dividing by 25 cancel so that x is alone. And there's the math to do 3200 divided by 25 is 128. I would expect that I would end up with 128 heads if if my experimental probability continues. Okay, um, awesome. I hope that made sense. If you have any questions about this uh, or any other uh, GED math question or beyond like Ashley, <laughs> be sure to drop it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it.